What's up, y'all? You're watching Union Minded. I'm your host, Eric, and I just gotta say, I love the IBEW. In all honesty, I love being a member of the IBEW. Let me tell you why. The IBEW was a lifeline when I was drowning in the ocean. I couldn't see a way out. The IBEW has allowed me to provide a better life for my family. It's allowed me to have health care for my kids. It's allowed me to be able to plan for their, their future, their college education. It's allowed me a financial freedom that I wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. It's also taught me so much. And at the same time that all of this is true, it's also imperfect. And so we always have to strive to make it the best version of itself because it is imperfect. I love my IBW local. Again, providing me a leg up to be able to feed my family and do things that as a child I couldn't see. And so with that context, of the imperfection that we have to face and rectify so that we live up to our highest purpose, I bring you this video. In this video, we dive into the Constitution again. It's always fun for me to start with the Declaration. Our cause is the cause of human justice, human rights, and human security. We refuse and will always refuse to condone or, lo or tolerate dictatorship or oppression of any kind. We will find and expel from our midst any who might attempt to destroy by subversion all that we stand for. The Brotherhood will continue to oppose commun communism, Nazism, racism, sexism, fascism, or any other subversive ism. We will support our God, our nations, and our union. It's a great declaration. And it lets you know what this organization is all about or what it professes to be all about. Let's talk about the objects really quick. To organize all workers in the electrical, in the entire electrical industry in the United States and Canada, including all of those in public utilities and electrical manufacturing, into local unions. It doesn't say some, it says organize all. To promote reasonable methods of work. Makes sense. To settle all disputes between employers and employees by arbitration, if possible. To cultivate feelings of friendship amongst those in our industry. To assist each other in sickness or distress. To secure employment to reduce the hours of daily labor, to secure adequate pay for our work, to seek a higher and higher standard of living, to seek security for the individual, and by legal and proper means to elevate the moral, intellectual, and social conditions of our members, their families, and dependents in the interest of a higher standard of citizenship. Those are really, really good objects. And they're objects that we should strive to obtain as members. Then you start to think, well, what, what are the qualifications of a member? You go to Article 19. I grew up on 19th Court in North Miami Beach, Florida. So that's kind of cool that we're going to Article 19. It says qualifications of members. Section 1. Any worker coming under the IBW's jurisdiction of good character and not less than 16 years of age is eligible for membership provided they pass a satisfactory examination when required to do so by the local union of good character. So it matters what type of people we are. We have to be people of good character. Section two, if after being admitted to membership, it is later found upon investigation that a member is not sufficiently acquainted with the branch or type of work which they are engaged to earn or command the established wages, then a local union can, through its executive or examining board or a specially appointed committee, require such member to revert to the proper apprentice grade and pay rate, to attend electrical study classes, or devote time towards becoming a competent, properly informed electrical mechanic or employee. So the qualifications of membership, section one spells it out pretty, pretty straightforward. Just be of good character and not less of 16 years of age and pass a satisfactory examination when it's required to do so and you can become a member. Article 20, 
further explains the admission of members. Section one, no local union can admit an applicant who does not reside in or who is not employed at the trade in the jurisdiction of the local union unless the local union is directed to admit them by the IP. So you can't just let in someone who doesn't live in the jurisdiction and who's not employed. No local union can admit any applicant who formerly was a member of the IBEW or who was suspended or expelled by or indebted to any local union without consent of the International Secretary Treasurer and without first consulting the last local union of which the applicant was a member in regard to their character and record. Again, there's that word character. It matters that we are of good character. The IP shall decide any case in dispute. No local union can admit any applicant for membership who is a member of another local union except as a traveler under the provisions of Article 23. No person may be a member of more than one local union at a time. So you can only be a part of one at a time. Each applicant for membership shall fill out an application blank furnished or approved by the IST and answer all questions. The original application or a copy must be sent to the IST. Pretty straightforward. The acceptance of an application for membership and the admission of the applicant into the local union or the IBEW constitutes a contract between the member, the local union, and the IBEW, and between such member and all other members of the IBEW. So understand when you join the IBEW and you become a member, it is a contract between you, the IBEW, the local union, and all of the siblings that are members of the IBEW. You get where I'm going with all of this? We are contractually obliged to each other to stand up for the things that are in here. Each applicant admitted shall, in the presence of members of the IBEW, repeat and sign the following obligation. I, Eric, in the presence of members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, promise and agree to conform to and abide by the Constitution and laws of the IBEW and its local unions. I will further the purposes for which the IBEW is instituted. I will bear true allegiance to it and will not sacrifice its interests in any manner. We all swore that oath when we became members. I read the objects earlier because I want you to understand that what we're supposed to be about is right here in our constitution. The declaration is right there in the front. What we're supposed to be about is right here. We swore an oath to be about what's in this book. It's considered a contractual obligation between us. There's a lot of folks that are on the job and sometimes they put the interests of others ahead of what's good for their union and for their siblings. And they do it regularly and they get away with it. But they get away with it because we as members tolerate it and we fall short of calling it out and putting a stop to it. Our union, our labor movement, can only be as strong as our good character as a union. When we fail in good character as a union, we fail each other. We got to do better. I love the IBEW. I love my local union. I love my siblings. Second only to my family. I owe the IBEW a debt that I feel I can never repay. The only way I know to repay it is to do as much as I can for its growth, for its betterment, to make it the best union in the world and one that leads the way in this fight for a better class of citizenship. My name is Eric. You're watching Union Minded. Remember the fight. It's not left and right. It's up and down. It's going to take solidarity to win always. Each one teach one. Get out there and reach one. And remember that there can be no union without you and I front and center. Let's go. Peace.